What's going on, people? Let's talk about passion, purpose, and determination. I was having this conversation with someone in the gym. I was pissing people off because I was ch -ch pow shooting sacred cows in the head. Yes, that's an ugly visual, but it was very appropriate because we kept going on and on about it because the whole follow your passion movement and make money. And I will tell you, purpose and determination will take you much farther than passion. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you using you. How many times have you been a part of something? Let's say, let's use some family shit. Let's use family stuff. Someone, let's lose your brother or your sister. You're little kids, right? And they do something to you. Something simple. You know, kids do things like that. Say you're in the back seat on the way to grandmother's house and your brother or sister thumps you on the ear. And how does it go? He who hits last catches the blame. Doesn't, doesn't matter who started it unless the parent sees who started it. He who hits last catches the blame. So you're just trying to defend yourself. You catch the blame, right? Now, let's look at this. Getting back at your brother or sister, this isn't a passion deal. It's a determination deal. It may take you weeks, months, or years to get them back. But sooner or later, you do. That's determination. That's the power of determination. Determination will carry you for weeks, months, and years. Passion will fizz out in a heartbeat because it's not... If your passion is built on air, whimsy, fantasy, or, well, that's just some good shit to do, it won't last that long. Let's talk about purpose. If, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons I love immigrants. You'll meet a man, woman from another country, and their purpose is to get the rest of the fam over here. They're working two, three, four jobs. I mean, just day in, day out, sometimes for years, to have enough money to pay all of the fees to get their fam here. They're operating on purpose, not passion, purpose. Once again, purpose. If you don't know any immigrants, be friends with some. Talk to them. Ask them what their stories are. And they may just blow your mind once you get past that. Well, you know, they're immigrants and the government is giving them special perks and money and shit. Because they're immigrants. No. If you know immigrants like I know immigrants and like I think, I don't know who is my favorite. Um, Russians... Nigerians or Koreans I, I I don't know because they all have this we gonna make this American thing work attitude and if you didn't know Nigerians have the highest college graduation rate of any of any immigrants yes higher than Asian didn't know that did you yeah Nigerians don't fucking play so if you look at that and really begin to understand what it's going to take for you to be successful, you will start to let some of the fantasy and whimsy and other things just go. You'll let that go. You will begin to move forward with a greater level of success because let's give you an example of how operating on false beliefs is inherently dangerous. Say someone lied on you right someone said that you were at a certain place at a certain time and the police come and they scoop you up and the next thing you know you got charges because someone lied on you the police are operating on false information but you are experiencing real harm real damage to your reputation based on false information that's how wrong that's how powerful that's how corruptive false information is and that's why this whole passion movement is so freaking dangerous because it will lead you astray i wasn't passionate about making youtube videos when i started when i actually started this shit i hated it hated it hated it. hated it all right i mean are you just going to stop with no one in front of you like that every day it was crazy so 
I didn't hate, I didn't love making videos. I hated it, didn't want to do it. I had to will myself. Now, why did I make those videos when I absolutely despised sitting in front of the camera? Because I felt weird. I felt stupid. I felt odd. Purpose. Glendon007, that's the original name of this channel, was founded and created to sell products. That was the purpose of this channel. That's why this channel is still around. If I had just like, you know, I'm going to create a channel just for kicks. Just for kicks. See how it goes. You know, if I was 12 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old, and I did that and I had enough, well, I do have a lot of free time. If I had a massive amount of free time and no real responsibilities, kicks for thing may go on for a while because... I'm looking around. There's a lot of YouTubers that I used to follow who don't make videos. I go to their channel and made a video in a year or two or three. I mean, it's just like, whoa, what happened? You know, some reason they just stopped making videos. Um, maybe they got sick. Maybe they died. But I'm going to say the overwhelming largest reason is it petered out. It was no longer fun. So they just stopped doing it. And this that's another point you, you gotta stop wishing or wanting everything to be fucking fun some of the things that you will do that will make you very successful are not fun are not even close to fun will never be fun will stress you will piss you off and you hate to do it there is no such thing as being successful and not having elements that lead to that success that don't make you happy. You just don't. I mean, there's some things you just don't want to do that are necessary for the trek to success, but you must do them. Otherwise, you will not be successful. So this whole thing about being happy all the time, well, you know, I mean, you can change your attitude where you have a better attitude about doing these things. I highly encourage that. But just, uh, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. I need to be, you know, like, I lost my happy. I'm trying to find my mojo. You don't try to find your mojo. You don't try to find your happiness. You fucking make your mojo. When I learned, and I'll tell you a quick story in a minute, that I could turn my creativity on, it was on, so to speak. Because one thing that really holds people back is waiting on what's called the right set of conditions. And this is just crazy today. I mean, this is really, really crazy. People are driving like maniacs. But the right set of conditions. You know, uh, I have a friend who can't write unless they're at their writing chair, writing desk, and the candles lit. And that's just too much fucking production. It's just too much pre-production to produce. So I used to do this thing years ago called Passionate Friday. There would be these love poems and other things. And the goal was to get those suckers out at 11.55 Thursday night. So, bam, as soon as it's Friday in most parts of the world, uh, some places it was already Friday, I would put that work out on my email distribution list. And there was times that when I was smart, I would start working on it. Because this is the thing. I would work on it for like a week. I would work on it for a week. Then life began to get a little bit better. I was doing more, so I didn't have as much free time. And then there was many times some of my best work came within 30 minutes. It was 1130. I'm like, I made this commitment. I got to put this stuff out. Uh, I'd rather be sleep. Uh, I'd rather be watching television because at that point I was watching way more television. And I just like, you know what? We're going to do this. Determination determination wasn't passion even though the thing was called passion friday it was determination and i would just sit there and just start doing stuff i turn on the jazz uh, i get up and walk i pace and then this is the trick you know if you're a writer and many people you know because when you talk to writers about doing stuff to make you write everyone is different no one's the same it will work for you may not work fuck that if you have writer's block do this sit down and just start writing some shit don't care what it is just just start priming the pump just start writing you know if you want if you got a school paper don't work on the school paper write a story about your damn dog 
you know, if you're crazy about your animal, it's going to give you the energy because, you know, you love Rover. Rover's your best friend. Rover humps, you know, your leg. Right about Rover. Then you'll be amazed because you prime the pump. You've got the mechanism working that now you can write your school paper. I've done it several times. So it was like supposed to be Passionate Friday. So uh, like I remember one night, it was around, and I was like, okay, it's, it's about eight. Let me start now. So I won't be <laughs> deadline. And it, it just wasn't coming. So I wrote this story about, no, actually I wrote a hate letter. Yeah, I wrote a hate letter. There was someone that was fucking pissing me off and they were a superior, right? And I couldn't do shit about it at the time. So I wrote them a fucking I hate you letter. No, I did not give it to him because I would have been fired and have been in subordination. I wasn't trying to do that because at the time I needed my cheese. Yeah, I was like you. I was in a situation where I had to keep my mouth closed, did not have a voice because if I used my voice, that ended the cheese production and I needed my cheese. So I wrote this I fucking hate you letter. I felt so good. You don't understand. Highly recommend this. Highly recommend this. If you got a situation, no, don't give them the letter. No, don't. Actually, don't even write in the email thing because you may put their address on the hit send by accident. But write this I fucking hate you letter and get it out of you. Get that stuff out of you. So I was sitting there feeling good. And then I started thinking about this girl that I call Sweet Brown. Because this girl, mm, 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 the way she walked was music, dude. So I started thinking about her after I wrote the I hate you letter because her and uh, the person I hated worked in the same department. And I started focusing on her and I wrote this poem about lips because she had the most immaculate lips. And that thing turned out to be like a thousand words. It was done. It was smooth. Sent that shit out. I mean, people were like, ooh, that's dope, man. You must have worked on that for weeks. I worked on it for about an hour about an hour one of the best ones um that went out for a while so what i'm telling you is when you're waiting on permission which is kind of what the passion movement does it puts you in the situation where you're waiting for passion to show up for you to actually get busy and do something and that that really really holds you back it holds you back because you have to become action oriented uh, another thing that used to be really, really fucked up about me was I was a big talker, big, big talker. I was like, I talked a great game, but my talk was about 90% and my action was about 10%. Hence why I was in the situation I was, hence the reason I didn't have any money. You know, there was a direct correlation between my inaction and my lack of money. Yeah, I hope y'all picked up on that. I really do. So when I, and then one day I had one of those you fucked up, man. Conversations. It's like, you got to stop talking about what you're going to do and just start doing it. And it was hard because habits define you. Habits make you. So I had to actually censor myself because I was getting ready to say what I was going to do. And I was like, shut up. I mean, I'm serious. I'm talking to myself like, shut the fuck up. Don't say it. Do it. And I'm about... 80% action and 20% talk now. I'm still haven't completely inverted from the 90% uh, talk to 10% action. I'm, I'm about eight. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. You know, that, that's the beauty of life. It's a process. But when you increase your action level, which can be circumvented by this passion movement, uh, follow your passion, that shit's not going to last. Passion is very close to what I call lust at first sight. You meet someone, you finish each other's sentences, and it's like just amazing. It's awesome. That shit gonna fall apart frequently. Two weeks to six weeks, it falls apart because you're operating on an incredible amount of chemistry and lust. Now, if you know what's going on and you know how to guide this and meter it out, you can make it sustainable. But if you just go all in, fucking four or five times a day, you know, not hanging with your friends, you just can, you, you literally burn up the love. You literally consume all of the love very quickly because it's such a high level 
and it's so rare that when you get it, you're like, "Ooh, give me some more, give me some more." It's like you're at an all, at, it's like you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet, and you're just like, you like the clump, the clumps. You just, oh yeah, give me some of this lentils. Oh yeah, I'll take some of that barbecue. Mm, give me some of those mashed. I mean, you just become a glutton on the love because it's so rare that you're just trying to get as much as you can before it disappears when it, you don't realize that if you slow down it will last longer and you'll eat more because love is something that renews and replenishes itself but when you consume it so fast before it has a chance to replenish uh you're out and this is what people do with these so-called passionate pursuits they get in it and they run and they just hustle they hustle 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 there was a study done that if you are on purpose you can work three to four hours a day and get the same amount of real work, actionable work, effective work done that you get in eight to 12 if you're off purpose. Yes, three to four hours a day can get you an incredible amount of work done. Uh, when I'm working like that and you know people get mad because I turn my phone over because I get all these updates, I turn off the phone, I turn off the television, make it quiet, put the right light on and just get to work. And I get so much stuff done. Just get it done. And then when you have these action points are done, you can move on. And that's why one of the things about working hard is you find out how you work. You find out your work methods. You find out, you know, what's better. You know, there's some people, most people don't have this issue, but there's some people who are true nocturnal people and they get their best work done at night. That's not everybody. Most of us, we're day people. So, you know, you'll know if you're a, a true nocturnal. You cannot fucking function in the real world. Well, I should say the real world. You can't function at that. You just, it just, I mean, this is something that's just fucked with you for years. You, my friend, need your own business. You, you got to have it or you need to work right night shift. There are people like that. Uh, but with the passion thing, don't become a sucker to the passion play where you're just talking to yourself, well, you know, it's my pat. No, you are lying to yourself because, the, and I, I'm, I'm actually going to step out and say there are people with true passions, but they act on them. Because if you have a passion, right? That's my passion, man, hang glide. And your ass has never been hang glide. You're fucking lying to yourself. If your passion is going to African villages and uh, digging wells to give good clean water to thirsty people and your ass has been in Africa at least 10 times okay I believe you if you know every time I see you you're trying to get some money from me because you're like yeah I'm trying to raise some money to go to Africa do you know that if you gave me $25 that would give water to an African family for a year 25 bucks give me the money I mean okay I believe you now what's the difference between those passions and your passions they're working on them if you ain't working on them, if you just keep jumping, that's my passion, man. That's my passion. Mm-hmm. You know, like that guy that claims that girl as his girlfriend, but she doesn't know who the fuck he is? Yeah, that's my girlfriend. And in his mind, in that internal world of his, that fucked up strange world, he's, that's his girlfriend for real. She don't know it, but she's his in his mind because he's too much of a coward to step to her and be turned down or turned up. Because, see, this is something else. A lot of people don't want to be succeed in the dating game. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. It's the same as business. Because when you go out for a big goal or you have this big thing that you want to do, it will require more of you than your current life. And the 50 laws of power, sorry, yeah, the 50 laws of hustling. I got a law. You must die to live. It's deep. It's deep. And uh, I've experienced it because you must die to live. So if you are going to go after something big, it's, it will require that you change how you live your life. And many people don't want to put that kind of effort out there. That's why they're just like, man, who got time for that? Man, that's just too much trouble. Man, I'm going to stay over here with the boys. Yo, Hank, you're going to drink all of the 40 and you didn't chip in motherfucker. I mean, you know, if that's your life, you know, uh, I feel bad for you because it doesn't have to be. Everyone is not going to become a millionaire. Nope, it's possible. But everyone's not going to become a millionaire. But if you take action, use determination, 
and create a purpose. See, this is another thing that messes people up. They're trying to find their purpose. You should be creating your purpose. You should create your destiny. When you go from trying to find, which means you must go out and look around. Here, boy, destiny. Yo, destiny. Yo, yo, destiny. Destiny may not be in the fucking metal with you, may not be in the field with you, but when you are, oh, I'm here in this lab, okay, I'm about to create some shit, I'm the fucking mad scientist, I'm about to fucking hook some stuff up, it's a different ballgame, because see, you don't have to go outside of yourself to find something, because what you're looking for is in you, you just got to put it out to the world and put it together, it's a whole different mindset. It's a different level of activity. It's a different way of thinking. Now, I want you to really think about what I just said. Because if you're out there looking for something and you can't find it, but you got something and all you got to do is uh, put it together, what is the best use of your time? Just saying. Just saying. What's the best use of your time? Looking or creating? Which is it. I mean, you know, it's real simple. Creating putting together some stuff and, and the thing is you've been groomed to look for your happiness from external measures and that's how you've been groomed that's how you've been trained since uh, you got that first gold scar that goes first gold star in kindergarten it's like ooh, Hank got a gold star for good conduct then he got patted on the head by the teacher his dick got hard and he hadn't been the same since because that created that emotional response. You get a gold star, you get a pat on the head, your dick gets hard. Okay, I'm, this is real shit. This is real stuff, I'm telling you. This is how you create emotional patterns and response systems. And these are very, very fucking powerful. Which is one of the reasons I don't watch porn. Porn will actually fuck up your fuck game. It sure will. And a lot of folks don't want to talk about that, but it will. <laughs> If you do the research and you you really you be like, oh fuck that, I'm not watching porn no more. It will fuck up your fuck game. Seriously. So because of the emotional response mechanisms that it creates. And if you, you know, you know, just take tribalism, right, with this passion thing. Let, let's just take some things that we know. we we won't even hypothesize. We'll just take some things we know. Uh, the year is 2000. The year of our Lord is 2014, right? Right now, we have a huge block of men and women who went to college, graduated. Some have amazingly high GPAs, some don't, some are middle of the road. And they all have one thing in common. They cannot find a job that pays them the money that they need. Notice I said need. I didn't say want. I said need. They cannot find a job to pay them the money that they need to live, have money to set aside, and be able to service that student loan debt. They've got to pick. It's like, I'm going to pay my student loans or I'm going to live on my own. What am I going to do? Well, I guess I'm living with mom and dad. That is the situation that many of these people have found themselves in. This is not hyperbole. Uh, it's been written up in the New York Times. It's been written. If you just go, hey, I, ha I graduated, but I can't find a job here on YouTube, you couldn't watch all the videos in your lifetime. That is, if you sat down today and said, I'm going to watch eight hours of these videos, you couldn't watch all of them before you took the dirt nap. That's how many people are talking about this. So we know that, right? But do the social sanctions, do the social, you know, social sanctions that, hey, you must go to college to be a considered an education person, educated person, you still have people doing this, even though the evidence is growing that this isn't the way to go. That is the power of creating emotional response. Because, all right, uh, I'm not, I wasn't as strong as I am now because if someone comes to me as like, oh, you, you're on the internet and you write books and that's how you make a living, I'm like, Jay-Z, and I just keep it moving. At one point, that shit used to fuck with me because of my tribalism. I grew up in Alabama. What you do, a respectable young man gets a haircut when I had hair, gets a haircut, gets a job, and goes to church on Sunday. Those were the things that were deemed exceptionally important. And if you go counter to that, you're not a good man. Doesn't matter if you're not out killing rabbits. Doesn't matter if you're bitch slapping giraffes. No, no, no. As long as you do those things, 
you good. You can kill the rabbits, bitch slaps the uh, giraffes, groom monkeys, and you know, uh, hang out with elephants, or have that cool parrot, you know, singing gangsta jungle rap to you. As long as you go to church, get a haircut, and have a good, respectable job, nobody's going to really talk bad about you. They'll just say you kind of got lost. But if you are not doing any of those heinous things to the animals, and you have your own business, but because people from your tribe cannot understand it, and it doesn't make sense to them, you are a bad person. Yes, you are. You 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 just bad. You you know, one day you're gonna get a job. I mean, I made a joke, you know, and people thought I was kidding. It was like for five years, my mom was like, So what you tell me is you still don't have a job. <laughs> I'm telling you, she came around a little bit when she saw the BMW. The first one. She came around a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because tribalism in mind you know the, the mind programming that we get from society is incredibly empower it's incredibly powerful many people cannot escape the gravity of their upbringing so if you had a great upbringing you know you're cool but if you had a jacked up upbringing um things may not be that good for you things may be uh cataclysmic things might be really really screwed up for you because of that thing that you've got going on in your life. It could be horrible. It could be terrible. This is could be going on. This is the thing that could be creating this miserable life for you. So just a little word about, you know, bump the passion movement, get on the purpose train, get on the determination train, and you will seek and well you'll experience success much sooner than riding the passion train all right this is glendon i'll see you on the good side make sure you get your free audio book make sure you join hustlers university and check out that special offer